Right, so continuous functions. Uh, I hope, I mean, the computer is sort of starting. So I hope it doesn't let me hang. <clears throat> One of these days it's gonna, it's gonna just start updating Windows halfway through the class. And there's gonna be a pop up that says, fuck you. But today is not that day. Okay, so we were talking about continuous functions. I'm going to recall and remind you what I said yesterday a continuous function is. A function is continuous at a point if the, if the limit as x approaches this point equals the value of the function. So um, if either the limit or the value don't exist, then the function cannot be said to be continuous. And if they both exist, then they're continuous when they're equal. Uh, so here's, so we're sort of seeing that functions tend to be continuous. Um, I'm going to do the last example before moving on. So here's a function that is sort of um, made not to be continuous. You take a function that is made of a piece on one side and another piece on one on the other. So, um, so this is the function. So here's x equals one, and when when x is smaller than one, so when I'm here, it's a it's a line with a y intercept equal to one and and slope uh, equals to negative one. And then this is when x is when x is equal to one. Uh, I'm not looking at this formula. When x is equal to one or bigger, I'm looking at a different line, a line with slope equal to one and y intercept equal to one. So what's f of one? Uh, f of one I can see, I can see over here, f of one is two. So uh, the function looks like this. It looks like it's not gonna be continuous at x equals one, and indeed it's not. So the question is, where is f continuous? So if I'm asking where f is continuous, I can't just say it's not continuous for x equals one, which, well, I, first of all, I have to check that. But then if, if you just say that, then I'm gonna ask you, what about x equals three? You have to answer for every x. So the thing is, if x is smaller than one, then, uh, then, close then then near uh, x f coincides with uh, with negative x plus one. So say I'm looking at x equals zero. If I'm looking at x equals zero I don't I don't care about the difference between this function or just the, the line. I mean the line that is exactly the same. Because I'm just looking at x equals zero, I'm looking close to x equals zero. If I'm looking at x equals zero point five, the same thing happens. Every point smaller than one, I might as well just be looking at a straight line and not a line made of two pieces like this one. So it 
coincides with a, with a continuous function. So f is continuous. Um, similarly, if x is bigger than one, near x, f is equal to x plus one, which is also continuous. Uh, so f is continuous as well, because it coincides with a continuous function. If I'm looking to the right of one, not a one, but something strictly bigger than one, I'm looking, say, here. Nearby, uh, all I see is a straight line, and the straight line is continuous because of the limit loss. So now that I've answered for every point, I've done started with the easy things first. Um, let's see what happens if x equals one in the middle. <clears throat> in the middle, uh, well, what, what does it look like it happens? Does it look continuous? And if it's continuous, then what's the value? What's the limit? And if it's not, then what's the value and what's the limit? Let's do the value first, because we should start with easier things f of 1, um, if I want to evaluate f at x equals 1, I look here and I go, which one of these includes 1? Well, the first one. I don't know who just woke up, but I'm not going to hear your bell. So um, I look in here. So the formula is x plus 1. f of 1 is 2. So the question is, is the limit equal to 2? Thank you, Dustin. Is the limit equal to two? Is the limit equal to two? From the right. What about from the left? Isn't the limit not equal to two because it's not two from the left and the right? They have two different values. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly, Shelby. Um, yeah, there's there's gonna be. This picture clearly looks like if I if I come from the right, I'm going to approach two, and if I come from the left, I'm gonna approach um, not two. I'm gonna approach zero. So so there's not gonna be a limit. So let's just write that down. If I approach uh, one. From the left, if x is smaller than one, then the function uh, agrees with negative x plus one, and this limit is is zero. If I approach the function from the right. then I'm looking at values of x strictly bigger than 1. So uh, I'm looking at the function x plus 1. And this limit is, is 2. And now I have two, um, two limits that are not equal, so the limit doesn't exist. Uh, So one-sided, <laughs> that's what happens when you try to look at the chat as you write. Um, the one-sided limits are not equal. So the limit of F does not exist. <clears throat> Okay. 
Um, so the limit does not exist. Uh, how can the limit equal the value of the function if it doesn't exist? The answer is that it can't. So the function is discontinuous. Um, so f is discontinuous. And we're done because I answered, uh, I answered the question is the function continuous at x for every possible number x um, and and that's all I needed to do. So <clears throat> we say, so I think someone already said uh, the function is going to be continuous from the right. So this function um, it's doing so even though Oh, that was a mistake, wasn't it? Oh, did I freeze everything? Okay, so Zoom froze, but I can still see my writing. Okay, but it's possible the chat is frozen. Can you hear me? Then so I'm replying to the chat. The chat is frozen. Oh, I can okay. hear you. I don't know about everybody else, but there's like black like blocks on your screen. Really? Yeah, there's like black boxes on the screen. Yeah, also. I see that too. Yeah, I see the same. <laughs> but I'm looking at my screen. I don't see the black boxes. I mean, I guess we could pull it up on our screen. I think there's so. other windows you have open. Yeah, but yeah, the black boxes are the shadows of freaking Zoom. Um, yeah. like I sent a, a yeah. screenshot so you can. Oh, it, it, it fixed so. itself. Um, yeah, my my screen is full of crap. There's my face. There's the the list of participants. There's the chat. Okay, came back. He was just thinking of destroying me. Okay, thank you. So um, I was saying this function, um, I mean, it looked like this. Basically, if I, if I come from the left, I can draw it without lifting the pen because I'm approaching the correct point. If I try to approach one from the, sorry, if I come from the right, it's fine. If I come from the left, I, t I still need to uh, jump here. It's not continuous. So we call this behavior continuous from the, from the right or from the left. We say F is continuous. from the left uh, x equals a oh. um, if f of a agrees not with the limit but with the limit um, from the left. And we say it's continuous from the right if it agrees with the limit from the right. So the previous example um, would be continuous, would be continuous from the right. Um, 
because we said that the value of the function at one was two and it was equal to the limit from the right. <clears throat> All right. So, not the most exciting, um, exciting concept to continuity from the left or the right, but it's nice because we can say we can say a function is continuous at the at the end of an interval. Um, for example, for example, um, I can't really take the limit as x approaches zero of root x. Um, I mean, I feel like this is a bit ambiguous. Some people will tell you that. Do you mean you put f of x from the right? I don't understand the question, Sydney. You put f of a equals, and then oh, yeah, um, Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so these are, this is an equality between two numbers. F of, if A is a number, I evaluate F there and I get a number. And if the limit exists, it's also a number. F of X is like a formula. Thank you. Okay, so if I look at the square root of X, can't really take the limit as X approaches zero. Doesn't really make sense because I can't approach zero from the left. I can't look at the square root of a ne small negative number because I can't look at the square root of negative numbers. Square root looks like the top half of a parabola. I can't approach it from the left. But what I can do is uh, do the limit from the right. And I mean, we have a, a law for this. The power law says that this is the square root of of the inside. This is zero. Um, so the square root is continuous. Um, from the right at zero. I can still I can draw it basically. I can draw it all the way up to zero without lifting my pen from the paper, even though I can't really say that it's continuous at zero. <clears throat> okay, so um, we can say that a function, so. Next thing is that we say that f is continuous on an interval if it is continuous on every point at, at every point of the interval. And it's continuous. Uh, From the yeah, and in the endpoints, we we only look at the limit from the left or from the right. So that's what it. Um, so for example, I say we say that the square root of x is continuous on. Um, on the interval that goes from zero to infinity. Uh, and this means, so, this means, um, it means two things. Uh, it is continuous at every F positive number. So everything in the interior of the interval, the interior is everything that is not the endpoints. Um, every at, at every point there, it's continuous, and at the endpoint, 
from the uh, it continues from the from the correct side. And um, a equals zero. <clears throat> um, so being continuous, basically. So normally, it means that you can draw the whole function. Um, This is not, I mean, this is not, um, doesn't always work because drawings might lie to you, but it tends, it really tends to work most of the time. The function is continuous in an interval if we can draw it, um, if we can draw it without lifting the pencil. Because when a function is discontinuous, normally there is a limit from a side and from the other that are different, and that looks like a jump. Um, so things that look not continuous are things like a jump, uh, things like the vertical asymptote, um, things like it looks continuous, but there's a, then there's a hole. Maybe as and so it has the value of a point somewhere floating around there, maybe not. Uh, maybe the, the function starts doing some wild things and there's no limit. So these are the kind of things that are not continuous. The functions that are continuous look like, basically like lines and curves normally. I mean, there's crazy things out there. This is not a course of the crazy things. Are there any questions? So like, there's many different ways to like, to tell, like to describe a function as like, whether it's completely continuous or if it's like continuous at like a certain like point, like, certain section of the interval except at like one point and then it continues to be continuous mm -hmm. yeah so you can i mean most functions you see are continuous normally even if you see a function that is discontinuous at a point normally it's continuous at a whole bunch of other points normally functions are discontinuous at a couple points the, the kind of functions you encounter day to day um they have a couple of bad points and then everywhere else are continuous. So, I mean, a lot of things could happen. Um, apparently there's this, um, I've heard a story where someone asked uh, if there was in, in like an SAT kind of exam, if there was a function discontinuous at exactly 20, 20 points, that was, People are very sad. Why did you put a continuous at every A? Wait. So Matthew is asking why I said that, why did I say that square root is continuous at every positive A and not at every positive A or zero? Because I can't really say, although I might say it, that the square root is continuous at zero because I can't really compute the limit of the square root at zero. Because computing the limit means I'm approaching from both sides, but I can't really take the square root of negative numbers to approach the square root from zero. So the only thing I can do for, for the square root is approach it, um, is take the square root of positive numbers, take the right-hand limit. And if I take the right-hand limit, then what I'm doing is saying that it's continuous from the right. But I mean, continuous from the right is the best it could be. <clears throat> Does that answer your question, Matthew? All right. So this is, um, I like the part that's coming up because this is where we, we say, look at 
all these functions that are continuous and then we never like we could prove it it would be awesome but we won't um but either way we will believe it and for um from now on we don't have to think about these anymore so what functions are continuous um the answer is all of them basically i mean not not literally all of them because i just give you a bunch of examples but that's not uh, it's hard to say a thing and write a different thing um so here's the theorem um if if f and g are continuous let's see so continuous uh at a point but of course I could, I could apply this at a bunch of different points um then so then all of these are continuous so what can i do with two continuous function so i have two two functions that are continuous it turns out if i add them i get a continuous function if i subtract them if I multiply them, if I multiply f by a constant, um, and if I divide them, as long as I don't do a stupid thing, and a stupid thing would be uh, dividing by zero. I mean, if um, yeah, if, if if I divide by zero, then the function is not even defined there, so it has no chance of being continuous, although maybe there's a way to define it. Um, okay. <clears throat> so why is this true? This is true because of the limit loss. Here we go. Is the limit of, is the limit of f of, of x plus g of x, what is this limit? You, which is a limit law, he would tell you that the, that this is the sum of the limits. And now, since they're both they're both continuous, since they're both continuous, I know this is the definition of being continuous. I can find the limit by plugging in, and this is the same thing as f plus g evaluated at a. So we're done. And the same goes for for all, all of them. So basically, this is just restating the limit loss in a different way. So, um, so here's an example. Um, a function that, like this is continuous because um, one is continuous, um, x is continuous, so that means that uh, two times x is continuous because it's a product of continuous functions, x times x is continuous, so x times x times x is continuous. Basically, this is a function that I just get by adding, subtracting, and multiplying. So um, this is continuous as well. And is this is there something special about this function? Not at all. Any anything you could get by taking the function x, which is continuous. I know how to do that limit. Anything you would get from taking that function x and summing, multiplying, dividing, uh, anything like that is continuous. 
So we conclude that um, any any all polynomials are continuous. So they're continuous everywhere. <clears throat> and if, if on top of adding, subtracting, and multiplying, I divide, then I get rational functions. And rational functions are also continuous, unless I divide by 0. So, um, the, th the thing is that they're continuous wherever the denominator doesn't vanish. So, so this is how you can justify a million limits from now on. Um, so if I ask you, if I ask you to compute this limit, for example, you will go a rational function is continuous. So as long as the uh, this is in the domain, um, I can just plug in. Um, can you change the screen? Oh yeah. Thank you. So yeah, um, if I give you basically any rational function and I ask you for a limit, since the function I uh, just said we know is continuous, uh, we can plug in. If, if plugging in doesn't work, that means that we weren't in the domain to start with and then there's a problem. But if it works, uh, if it works, then nothing else to do. So what happens if I plug in? I have, I don't care what I have, something. Three divided by negative 16. And that's it. So, I mean, I've sort of been doing this all, all the time. My high school teacher always said everywhere continuous. What is everywhere continuous? Oh, just saying everywhere continuous instead of saying continuous? Yes, it's fine. Uh, it's just um, as long as you know what you mean by everywhere, because if the denominator is zero, then you're not continuous anymore. Yeah, you can say everywhere for at all points. I'm fine with that. I, I understand. The rule is if I understand, then it's fine. And I understand the word everywhere. So um, you can also say all real numbers. Does Wait, that, so yeah. I'm kind of, okay, so I'm confused. So when we were doing examples with like other functions, we were saying that, you know, it was continuous as long as it uh, it was continuous everywhere except, you know, at, like at, at a certain point. But then, so like, now we're saying that practically all functions are continuous? Yeah, um, if you look back through the examples, I mean, for example, um, this function I started with today, this is not a, a polynomial. 
this is two polynomials start stuck together. And that is not, I didn't make any claims about that. And when you stick polynomials, two polynomials together, normally, uh, normally you're not gonna get a continuous function. Or maybe you're lucky and you do. But I didn't say anything about sticking functions together like Frankenstein. Uh, the examples, the examples from yesterday. So <clears throat> yesterday I showed a bunch of uh, other non-continuous functions, but they were the thing is they were all kind of weird. <clears throat> which is something that happens often. Um, so, for example, this function, uh, well, it was continuous everywhere except for two, and at two, the denominator vanished. So that wasn't even in the domain. Uh, this function, well, it was also defined in two pieces, which is a bad sign, and at zero, the denominator vanished. So again, something bad was happening. Uh, that, oh, that was all the examples from yesterday. So this is this is what happened. If you if you don't see anything weird, then the function is continuous. And if you see anything weird, then it could still be continuous. But then you have to then it's going to be harder to see. Okay. So I've been I know I've been talking about limits and saying that a lot of limits just work uh, and not really checking. But the reason that they just work is the, that these functions are all continuous. And now, from now on, that is how I'm going to justify all of these things. And so I said all rational functions. And the thing is, what about, what about all the other functions we know? Um, like exponentials. Um, so what functions do we know? Exponentials, roots, um, the things you get from uh, the things you get from rational functions and then taking roots, which the book calls algebraic functions. Um, there's logarithms, there's trig functions. Um, there's um, and there's inverse trig functions, and I think well, I did miss functions that you know, but I don't, I don't think you're gonna guess which ones I miss right now. So these functions are all continuous in their domain. This is important because if, if you're not in the domain, for example, you try to look at the logarithm at zero, where it's not defined, it's not going to be continuous. But if you try to look at the logarithm at three, where it is defined, then um, then it is. So so that's it. Every every function uh, every function is nice. <clears throat> So, um, I mean, this is great. Um, it means we don't have to think very hard about a lot of things. For example, this, this example is from the book. Try to compute this limit. The limit of sine divided by two plus cosine. Uh, well, if this function was continuous, um then then we would just need to plug in so is it continuous well sine and cosine are continuous because they're trig functions um so by the sum law 
two plus cosine is continuous. And then by the quotient law, when I divide two continuous functions, I get a continuous function. Um, as long as I didn't divide by zero. So when did I divide by zero? I divide by zero if two plus cosine is zero. When is two plus cosine equal to zero? Tuesdays. Never, never. Exactly. Thank you, Sam. Uh, two plus cosine is is zero when cosine is negative two, uh, which is never because cosine is between negative one and one. So, so this function is continuous everywhere. It's, con sorry, it's continuous. I made a mistake. Uh, so the problem is when we divide by zero. Uh, and when are we dividing by zero? It seems our, we're never screwing up. So we're always getting a continuous. It's um, the function is continuous everywhere. So it's continuous. Yeah. I, I don't even need this right now because I only care about x equals pi for this particular problem. So knowing this, I just plug it in. I do sine of pi divided by two plus cosine pi. Um, pi is half a wave. So this is sine, this is cosine. Sine of pi is zero, cosine of pi is negative one. So this limit is zero. That's it. So of course, the fact that most functions are um, continuous all the time doesn't mean that in your life, most functions are going to be continuous most of the time, especially if you're doing your homework, because the questions you're going to get are going to be the interesting ones. If you And if you select for the interesting things, uh, then it's not going to be obvious all the time that things are continuous. Um, and I mean, it makes sense that all functions are continuous, all the functions we think about, because if you take a function that is not continuous, um, those functions are not nice enough for us to give us, for to give them a name, you know, nobody, I mean, if I, you know, this function, which is not continuous, I guess the heavy side function has, is not continuous. But if I took this function and I said, this is now the Moises function, people will be like, okay, I don't give a crap um, because it's not a nice function. Uh, and then, and then we would have to go saying every function we talk about, except for the Moises function is continuous. That would be so annoying. So I think it's like a psychology thing that if we talk about a function, it's because it's continuous. And, and that's going to be it for today. Um, tomorrow, I'll do some examples with this. And I'll talk about um, the thing is, these are not all the functions. I mean, you can tell me tomorrow which functions I missed. And that's it. Recording.